I've not always been a 3D arts digital sculptor. Some of you know this. Although I've done a lot of very interesting things in my life outside of 3D, back in the 1980s, if you watch British television, there was a damn good chance you'll see me there, quite often, and often without noticing. I was all over the papers and radio as well, doing rather well for myself, travelling all over the world as an escapologist, until a nasty health problem brought the end to a promising career. I still hold the world record that I broke back then. Nobody's managed to break it. So this video is mainly a sort of tiny document for my kids for when they grew up to see that daddy wasn't just an artist and got up some very odd things in the name of entertainment. This is sort of the edited highlights. Unfortunately, I don't have my first TV appearance uh, on VHS, which is a shame because it's both very embarrassing and you think the hair's bad there now, you should see it moving, seriously. I run it my first time on TV, it was on a local news programme and it features part of the story they were doing on me, some very rudimentary special effects. Ironic. The second time I was on TV, it was also a local news show, but as I'd struck a friendship with the director, he spent way more on the set than he was supposed to. His name was Phil Pride, he was Australian, and he got into a lot of trouble for it. Now I've muted the audio track and cut a lot of the interview out, as, to be honest, if you think you have problems understanding my accent now, you would never understand me age 13. Plus, it is also very embarrassing. Now, around this time, I started performing professionally. Even though I was still at school, I was pulling in a wage for a 12-month performance that was equal to what most people were earning for a monthly wage. Now, let's just say this didn't go down well with people in my hometown, which at the time had 70% unemployment. They own police tape, but they own another make. All right, OK. Well, put these on, uh, Wayne. Let's get those on first. Here's the key. Here's the key. Now the chain. Now, you've, you've actually body searched Wayne, haven't you? Yes, I have. He's and, not concealing... And, si and since then, you've, he's never been out of your sight? That's right. He isn't concealing anything on him. He's not concealing anything on him? No. Right. <laughs> right. So you can wrap that round him as tight as you can. Is the other. Oh, you want the key for that, do you? Okay. How's that for you, Wayne? That's all right. It's what? That's all oh, right. Are you all right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Good. Thanks. Now, would you like to get out of that? No, I wouldn't like to get out of it, no. Okay, now finally, into the sack. And this. This bar's going through, I've dropped a key. There we are. Oh. Okay. I'll take the other lock, actually, because that's got to go on first, isn't it? Right. Okay. Right, now, are you, are you ready, Wayne? Yep. You ready? Yep. OK, Lee, and... Uh, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Just close that lock. Close tight. That's right. Just ready for... All set. Go. Ready? Go. Melody. Terrific. Amazing. <laughs> and the keys are still here in my hand. Mm. And the key to the handcuffs. What do you think of that, Lee? It's uh, pretty astounding. I hope he doesn't tell anybody else how to do that. <laughs> well done. Very well. 
Wayne yes, Secret, this is, ladies and gentlemen. Now, Wayne Secret is the world's youngest escapologist. How old are you, Wayne? I'm 15. 15 years old. How long have you been escaping? Uh, I'm all my life, really, but professionally for the past five or six years. Five or six years, and you, in fact, you've got a world record. Tell us about the world record you hold. Well, the world record is for the Supreme Spirit Sack Escape. That's escaping from a black sack, leaving everything still sealed after 5.49 seconds. Now, that's one world record, but today he's going to attempt a second one. Can I ask you to stand up, Wayne? Do you mind? Now, this is a, a harness which you actually had designed for yourself, right? Yes. And you're the only person who's ever got out of it so far. Right, now, what, what we're going to do is try to set an unofficial world record. The reason it's unofficial is I'm the world's worst timekeeper, but I'm going to try. This has never been done before anywhere in the world. Wayne is going to attempt to set a record for everyone else to break. So, Wayne, your time starts now. After the appearance of the Tom O'Connor Roadshow, I started performing all sorts of escapes all over the world, and it was a very dangerous one. Now my parents weren't entertainment people and they weren't pushy showbiz types. They were just a working class couple in a town with no work and zero prospects, and a very weird kid. Although supportive of me, everything I did was my idea, and it often took quite some convincing for them to agree to it. I was on the late Eamon Andrews' last but one TV appearance where he broke every rule in the book in the What's My the Land panel, panel game. Catch up or begin to catch up. Yeah. <laughs> ah, very interesting occupation. Wayne Robson, Wayne. peace of mind for them, Wayne. Wayne. Where do you come from, Wayne? Consa County Durham. County Durham. Stu County Durham, I'd say, and I see. All right, we let you see at home what Wayne Robson from County Durham does for a living. <laughs> All right, it's off your screens, and I think I ought to explain that you can see that Wayne is quite young, mm -hmm. uh, and he's... Compared to you, yeah. Compared to... A, <laughs> I, I, I choked back on that remark. Uh, he's quite young. Um, and he's just about to make this his full-time career, but he has been earning in a self-employed capacity from this occupation, even though he's in his final year at school. I want to give you all the facts of fairness. Now, off you go. Barbara. So, am I right in saying it is not called an apprenticeship? You, you are right. He is not serving an apprenticeship, no. Right. So when you go into this job, Wayne, you will still presumably be self-employed. That's right, yes. yes. Is it a service that you give? No. No, it's not. That's one gone. George Gale. So in other words, you will, you will when you start doing it, be making something. Is that right? No, no it is no. not right. Two gone. Ernie Wise. It's very specialized. Is it something... Very, yes. very. Do you uh, work with some, um, some special materials? Yes. Yes. I'm getting nowhere fast. <laughs> uh, is it something uh, that you do with your hands creatively? Not creatively, but uh, certainly his hands are involved very much. Oh. Chilly. Um, you've got a lovely Irish face and you look sort of, I mean, what you're not doing sounds, material sounds strange. Are you, are you, um, could you make what you're making for me? No, because he's not making product? anything. Well, I thought he was making a product. No, no, there isn't no. A... Hello. Isn't there? Obviously, if you've been doing this from such a young age, you have a, a very special talent. Yes. <laughs> was it spotted, I mean, have you had this talent for more than half your life? Yes. 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 Not under the same name, but he's had that talent. It was spotted when he was two, actually. Yes. Is it some kind of... By his mother. Is it some she kind couldn't of, find him. Some, some kind of spiritual... Oh, gone. I, I had, no, no, keep on talking. It's just a time. I want to... It's some time kind of spiritual gift. I've got water divining coming into my head. I don't know why. No, I, let it go yeah. right out. I've got to judge he's beaten the panel on time oh, yeah. because you were nowhere near. Oh, he is an escapologist. Oh, now, you've got ah. something here to show us. You were nowhere near. Because I want to just leave a bit of time to show you this. 
He's an escapologist since he was two. He literally, his mother lost him in the garden. He turned up next door having gone through a tunnel and was made his own tunnel. But now he's going, to, his teeth. he's going to give us a little uh, uh, demonstration here. I'm going to lock him up in uh, three different devices, uh, which are pick proof. And we, we, I've only got a minute left for you to do it. So the first thing is a thumb, isn't it? <laughs> yes, this is a, what do you call it? Thumb cups. Thumb cups. Thumb cups. Because I, I'd break his thumb if I put them on. These are absolutely, I mean, they are used by forces all over the world, aren't they? Yeah. I mean, and that's a considered, that is locked unbreakable. The next thing I've put on is bare handcuffs, right? Chains. Chains, next. Chains, chain. Now, how do, oh, yes, that's open. Now, uh, this is, describe what I'm putting on. Tell me what it is. This is a piece of very heavily welded quarter-inch chain and a four-lever brass padlock. <laughs> Yeah. Is, again, it's considered to be pick proof. In other words, you can't open right, it without the key. And now uh, I've locked it. That's locked. And handcuffs. Now uh, I put that this way. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. This way. I think we're going to be here all night. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was an end product. <laughs> now, scout. you have got one minute to get out of those three, yeah. all with the aid of just a simple hairpin. Stand over there. Let's see if you can do it. My goodness me, you've got less than a minute, but do your best anyway. Do your best. That's all we've time for. I'm afraid his name, when he goes into the business, will be Wayne Secret. He's still got to do his exam in June, and I'm sure you'll pass it as quickly as you did that. See you next week. Till then, good night from Ernie, Jilly, Simon, Clara, and Bill George, and of course, Wayne Secret. Well done. And I give you a certificate, a certificate all round the house. I think we'll be here to now after this, things went nuts. I was making more money than I'd ever seen in my life. Ernie Wise is currently put every appearing single penny in the mystery of Edwin Drood at the Savoy Theatre in London. would have it, I would only appear on TV as Mr. Paul a few more times after this, before he died into the health problem and he'd not have to give it up forever. An escapologist, that was the word we were looking for. Wayne Secret. Wayne, very nice to see you. They, Thank you. they didn't get you. Now, Wayne, you've got a straitjacket on here, uh, which I would imagine for anybody other than somebody very special like yourself, it is extremely difficult to get out of. That's right, yes. But the thing about it is you do it in something like 45 seconds? Yes. That's ridiculous. Let's have a look, though. If you can actually turn around, let's see the straps here and all the buckles. All that's actually uh, quite solid there. You think... Tonight, you can actually do that in 45 seconds. I'll give it a try. All right, Wayne, shall I take the hat off? That's great. All right, then, good luck. 45 seconds, he's promised to get this done in. Three, two, one. Yeah! Oh, yeah. Is he having problems here? Look at that one arm out already. He's going to do this easily. As easily as anybody can get out of a straight jacket. Look at this. He's done it already. Amazing. That's just 30 seconds. Wayne Secret from Concerts. Well, no points there. Emma and... The last time I appeared on TV was in a documentary entitled When the Dog Bites about my hometown of Consett. Now, everybody in it, including the local authorities and council, were told that it was to cover the effect that the government, ha government closing the local sewer works had, uh, and what the effect of closing the main employer in the town, what happens when they rip the soul of it out. Now, what we didn't find out until years later was there was an actual agenda behind this. And I know this for a fact because it appeared in a book by the director. 
They set out to make an entire town look like fools, myself included. Now they cut my performance to ribbons and gave me the impression that I'd never get got out of anything, you know, nothing was ever finished in the shot. It ruined my career in the process. The end result was embarrassing and it hit my confidence like 10 ton of shit. And I would never trust the media ever again, and I still don't. They set an entire town up and I was the only person from the town who was credited as a cast member. Now I took considerable heat from local councillors and local authorities and everybody else who thought it made much more sense, rather than blame themselves, to put all the blame on the 18 year old lad. Not long after this, as luck would have it, I was diagnosed with severe scoliosis of the spine. I had a double bend and a twist right in the spine and it hadn't been spotted my entire life and it had been left untreated. Now the upshot of this was every time I was dangling off the end of a crane in a straight jacket, I was risking being in a wheelchair and never walking again for the rest of my life. So I give it all up overnight. Now as the waiting list on the National Health Service here in England at the time was over 80 months long, I spent about 10 months lying flat on my back unable to move in pain. And then I thought, sod this, and I spent every penny I'd ever earned getting it put right. Now while I can never be a skateboarder again, it meant I could live a normal life. And I still do. So all the money had gone. Everything I had earned had vanished on medical bills. And so I was left, the same as all the other kids my age, in a dead-end town with 70% unemployment and no future. To bring money in, I started doing extra work on TV series that were filming around the northeast of England. So let's do a little game of Spot the Wayne. I warn you, I'm not easy to spot on some of these. Oh yes, that is Daniel Craig, who later ended up as James Bond, and Christopher Eccleston, who later played, amongst other things, Doctor Who. Now I'm all over this. It was uh, called um, Our Friends in the North. I'm technically in three places at the same time in the sequence of shots. I was in a dance scene before this, I was in the fight scenes to playing both a striking miner and the police officer, then I was also playing another striking miner and one of the scab miners at the same time. Eat your heart, heart out, Doctor Who. After a few more bits of extra work and various Catherine Cooks and miniseries and stuff like that, my curtain cause of professional TV extra was in the Robson and Jerome music video which got a number one Saturday night in the movies. Now low points to this shoot included, now hold on to your hats because you will not believe this, an extra brain th threatened with arrest for getting his pierced cock out in a Newcastle Keyside bar which was doing the catering. This was during the dinner hour, it was right next door to the courts and it was full of barristers. The next day, three quarters of the cast came down with food poisoning from the food on the said day before. Um, and then we had Ross and Jerome 
not actually being on speaking terms with each other and refusing to be in the same room, which made everything much more complex to do the shots. Now the stuff I haven't shown you in this video, or even mentioned, uh, I was, by the time I was in two versions of Swan Lake with the World Festival Ballet. One's as a soldier in tights and a very large studded leather cod piece. Yeah, just bear that in mind, that mental picture. My wife would kill me if I showed you those pics. And I was also a monk, who I was actually stark bollock naked under the habit because it was so thick and so heavy under the lights. After that I left performing behind because to be honest it was getting too painful being close to performing in a small way as an extra but unable to do the one thing I was good at and that I loved. So I spent my time recording more songs and albums and working as a sound engineer and session guy and various other jobs. Until one day years later I discovered 3D and I've never looked back. Until now. <laughs> 